coronary artery calcium score is zero, bro. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. How some people in the low carb keto carnivore space will do the diet for a few years and predictably their LDL cholesterol will go up and then they'll go get a CAC test and their coronary artery calcium score will come back as a zero. And I'm gonna share with you guys why I'm not convinced that this is healthy long term and maybe you shouldn't be either. And for example here, we're gonna use the case of Dr. Paul Saladino, everybody's favorite carnivore MD. Let's take a look and see his results. So let's take a look at the actual report that was given to Dr. Paul Saladino from his doctor with the results from his cardiac test. So as you can see, his levels for cardiac blockage in his arteries are zero, nothing, absolutely nothing. This is after two years of eating a cholesterol LDL based diet. We're talking red meat every single day. His arteries have zero clogging. They're perfect. They're in perfect health. So two years on a carnivore diet and his CAC score was zero. Nothing to worry about, right? Well, that's for you to decide. Now take a look at this research right here, which comes from the Cooper Center Longitudinal Study, which had an N of over 36,000 people and a median follow-up time of over 26 years. And what you'll see is that for participants that had an LDLC over 160, there was an increased relative risk of between 50 and 80% death by cardiovascular disease. So I don't really wanna play with that, but this is the key detail here, guys. If you look at this chart, it doesn't happen in two years or five years. This is a study with a longer follow-up. So we can follow these people through time and see that it really starts kicking and hitting hard after 15 years, 20 years. That's when you start to see the high LDL having this stronger association with an increased relative risk of heart disease. So I'm personally, not gonna take that kind of risk. I don't wanna be in that upper bracket. Now, whether or not you decide you're willing to take the risk, that's up to you. But one of the things that the low carb keto carnivore people always try to do is they try to say, well, as long as you're not eating any sugar, then you got the high LDL, there's nothing to worry about. So according to Dr. Paul Saladino, there is no way that high levels of LDL and high levels of cholesterol can actually cause inflammatory diseases in the heart, clogging issues in the arteries, or insulin resistance of any kind, of any shape or form, not based on any of his research and not based on his experience either. Too much sugar, too much fat, together in the same diet as one is the issue, not the cholesterol, not the LDL. All right, so the problem with saying, as long as you don't eat any sugar, you'll never get heart disease with this elevated LDL, is that a lot of these people who do low carb keto carnivore, they don't stay zero carb for their entire lives. They go back to eating rice and fruit and a lot of times these people end up binging on like fatty junky carbs. And as a result of being low carb for so long, they just get sick of it. Case in point, Paul Saladino. But I do feel like a lot of days having 100 grams of carbs from ancestrally consistent sources is a benefit for me personally. I'll mix fruit, honey, or white rice, depending on the day. Some days I don't do any. Some people do okay with sweet potato. I don't love it, a lot of oxalate in there. So Dr. Paul Saladino was pretty famous for going on the Joe Rogan podcast and announcing to the world that his LDL cholesterol was over 500 milligrams per deciliter. Great, dude. Well, that clip you just saw was from early November, 2020. And that's right around the time that Dr. Paul Saladino started eating more carbs, more fruit, white rice. So the bottom line is that, dude, you got this sky high LDL cholesterol. And so you got to throw out the argument that, well, as long as you never have carbs, you won't get heart disease because dudes are going back to eating carbs. You follow me? So let, let's just keep it straight here, guys. Like. This dude had sky high LDL cholesterol, over 500 milligrams per deciliter, went back to eating carbs, and then his cholesterol dropped. So take a look at this clip. 
cardio check machine. This is pretty cool. I can check my cholesterol at home. I did a check this morning, fasting, I wanted to show you. Total is 350, enough to give most cardiologists a heart attack. Uh, HDL is 69 today. It's a little lower than usual for me. Triglycerides, 75. LDL is calculated at 266. And um, total cholesterol HDL ratio is 5.1. So what's interesting about this is that Recently on Rogan, um, I talked about an LDL of 533, and it's dropped significantly since then with essentially no changes. There's just a lot of fluctuation in LDL. This definitely argues against mainstream hypotheses regarding LDL um, flux and uh, kinetics. Uh, kinetics. What? And so, dude started eating more plant-based foods, and then his LDL dropped from... 533 on the Rogan podcast down into the 200s and this dude's like this definitely questions the hypothesis about the flux and kinetics of LDL like what dude huh is nobody gonna check this like nobody's gonna say something about this except for me like dude so you have very high LDL as a result of eating this mostly red meat nose to tail organ nerd diet and then all of a sudden you're like, by the way, guys, I'm eating white rice and uh, some fruit and honey. And so now we just got to throw out the whole argument that being really low carb is going to prevent you from having heart disease as a result of having this sky high LDL cholesterol. He's on Twitter talking about the more I think about it, guys, the, I believe the ratio of saturated fat to polyunsaturated fat in my diet is the determining factor. It's like, dude, this was described in the 1960s with the Hegstead equation, dude. Like, stop acting like you're having some breakthrough knowledge here. This is such a joke. Like, how, I can't even believe you typed that, dude. Like, you started eating some plants and your cholesterol went down? Like, wow, wow. Most of my audience will know after a year and a half of doing that, I started to get some kind of electrolyte issues and kind of felt cold all the time being in keto because for a year and a half, I ate nothing but meat and fat and organs and salt. And I start, felt kind of cold all the time. I had some palpitations and believe me, it was, I had some cognitive dissonance when I added in carbohydrates back. Look, there is no one perfect study. And at the end of the day, I'm not saying that this one study should convince you to be concerned about your cholesterol levels. But there was one thing that I found interesting in this study, which is that they selected the participants based on a low 10-year risk profile based on the data metrics that they selected for of having cardiovascular disease. So these were people that were supposed to be healthy. And if you look into the Cooper Center and the stuff that they did, this guy was, this Cooper guy back in the day was all about aerobic exercise and knew that it was important in, in health and he put all these people on this treadmill test, which is pretty cool if you want to learn about it. But the bottom line is that these were people who were healthy. And so when somebody in the low carb sphere is like, well, I'm also you know, exercising and I also you know don't have insulin resistance and I don't eat sugar. And it's like, dude, if your LDL is fi over 500, like I'm not sure you get a pass based on other lifestyle factors. like. At least for me, I'm not I'm not taking that risk. I mean, it's up to you. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to you to assess the risk as you see fit. And you can dismiss relative risk. You can dismiss whatever risk you want to dismiss. But hey, I'm just sharing information here. And when it comes to this low carb stuff, there's a lot of things that people are doing that influencers are doing that nobody's watching the watchers. Nobody's watching the influencers is what I mean to say. So. What I want y'all to do is go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And the way that I found this study is from a physician named Dr. Gil Carvalho. And I hope I'm saying that right, but Dr. Gil runs a channel named Nutrition Made Simple here on YouTube. And he's pretty level-headed, shares a lot of interesting stuff. So I will put a link at the end of this video to check out Nutrition Made Simple here on YouTube. All right, y'all know what time it is. Red Pill Vegan next